Hey guys, how are you? Let's do top 10 tips for production in 2023. And my name is Gogo Bethke. And I'm sipping on my boring black coffee because I'm doing intermittent fasting. So I don't eat or drink anything until one o'clock in the afternoon. So good old boring black coffee. I feel so old every time I look at it. Okay, so let's talk about this. I have 10 tips for you for production. I believe that if COVID taught us anything, it taught us to go back to people. Um, to go back to the good old ways when you form actual relationship and you spend time with people and they get to know you and you get to know them and then they send you their cousins. So are you ready to do that? Number one tip. Oh, I have a notebook and write this down. I have mine. <laughs> Team Goggle EXP. Okay. So have a notebook and write this down. Hopefully you get as much as 1% change in your life today. Something that you didn't know before that you're going to learn today. And I'm happy to help you with that, but also happy to contribute to your 365% change by the end of the year. If you change 1% a day, you'll be, you'll be a new person, not a new person, a three and a half times better person that you were today by the end of the year. Okay, number one tip, never eat alone. What do I mean by that? I got this tip from a coach early in my real estate career, and it changed my life. Um, if you think about it, my real name, you might know me as Gogo today, but my real name is Junvir. Mm hmm yeah good old hungarian name um when i got that name when i was born in transylvania romania my parents didn't know i'm going to be selling real estate in the u.s one day so they didn't think of a fancy name right so try to sell real estate in pinkton michigan with a name called junvir good luck right they don't know if i'm a man or woman they don't know how to pronounce it so they would never even try to call me so where i had my biggest success is as soon as i could get in front of you if i can get physically in the same space with you which open houses allowed me to do that, lunches allowed me to do that, anywhere events allowed me to do that, anywhere I can go in person, I know I can win you over. I just need that opportunity to get in front of you. So never eat alone came from my coach saying, are you going to eat lunch today? Mm, yeah. How about tomorrow? Yeah. Friday? Yeah. If it's yes, don't ever eat alone. So even if you are just like in between appointments, and this one I learned from my best friend, don't go and sit in the back of the restaurant with your laptop and a, and a, and a table, right? Go sit at the bar because you're going to have a person to your left, a person to your right. You're going to start up a conversation. Next thing you know, they're buying or selling the house with you or they're selling, sending their cousin to you, right? Um, so never eat alone means is that sit down, have somebody with you, meet a new person, build another relationship, get to know somebody who maybe you met someone at yoga. Maybe it's from your book club, but you don't really know her, but you want to get to know her, invite them out for lunch. Never eat alone. Now, what's going to happen at that lunch? Just a good old conversation. i would never done that. Hey, I'm a realtor. Would you come and sell a house with me or buy a house with me? Do you have any real estate needs? I never do that. It's, I hate the hard sales pitch. I don't do that. So what I do do is I ask them questions like, hey, what do you do for a living? What does your husband do for a living? Is there any way that I can support you guys? Oh, your husband's a plumber? Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Can I add him to my, um, we have what's called our preferred vendors list, right? So I'm truly building relationships and I'm always coming from the perspective that if I can give before I take, now you owe me. I don't think you owe me, right? But they think they owe me. So if I am keep sending plumber clients to her husband, right? Now she's going to be like, oh my gosh, next time she's at a book club party, she's going to tell all the ladies to use me as a realtor, right? So I want you to build these relationships, truly have a heart to heart at this lunch with the person. It's going to come up when you ask them, what do they do for a living? Guess what? In return, they're going to ask you the same thing. So real estate will come up. I just don't want you to hard sales pitch them at lunch because that's awkward. Okay. Well, at least it's awkward for me. I don't do that. Number two, track everything. I'm a huge nerd. My trackers have trackers. Number one is the greatness tracker. Um, if you go to my profile on Gogo's Real Estate on Instagram, I can share the great, actually you'll find the greatness tracker in there. I'm going to walk you through it very quick. It takes 90 days, guys, to create new habits. This break bread is actually a part of the greatness tracker, um, but never eat alone. So what happens is you you might look at your day to day and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. I don't have time for do this or do that. Right. But when you write it down, when you actually go through your day about like how many people you called, how many lunches you had, how many events you went to, how many cards you sent out, how many social media posts you made, how many past clients you called back, how many birthday parties, like, like all of that. Right. Um, you'll see how much you actually don't work or how many things you do that is not tied to your real estate business. So when you start doing the greatness tracker, I want you to take a clipboard, clip pages to it, right? You get a greatness tracker page for every single week. And I want you to do that for nine weeks, 90 days. 
that's more than nine weeks, 12 weeks, 90 days. What happens is you're going to see a pattern. You're going to see a where you are not working and you're slacking off. You're going to see when you are working, what's working, right? Is it the face to faces where you usually get your clients from? Is it the events that you get your clients from? Is it the thank you cards that you send out where you get your clients from? Is it the open houses? Is it the social media posts? Because eventually you don't want to have to do it all. Eventually you want to do the part that you're best at and makes you the quickest and the fastest the money that you need to make, right? But in order to do that, you have to track it. You need to know what are you doing and what's working or what are you not doing to fill the time, right? So that's the greatness tracker. You can go to Google's Real Estate on Instagram, go to my links and you'll find it. The next one is a lead tracker. I strongly recommend a CRM program. I use multitudes of them. I have Lion Desk, I have KV Core, I have um, CRM Grow, I have Go High Level, I have ClickFunnels, you name it, I have it, right? But what happens is if you do this marketing thing right, and if you're especially if you're doing it with the power of social media, you're going to end up with thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of leads. You can possibly get back to all of them and you can need to figure out which one is hot, which one is warm and which one is cold. Okay. So with the lead tracker, what happens is it's in a good old Excel sheet that has multiple tabs for myself. Today, I'm no longer in production. I have a team in Michigan, um, but we still use the same exact lead tracker than I did. We just added on some additional tabs. Now, each of my agents have their own tab. So pretty much what happens is when a lead comes in, they have A, B, or C. A is hot, meaning that they're ready to buy in the next 30 days. B, 30 to 60 days, and C, 60 or uh, 60 and on, right? Sometimes if the perfect lead from property comes on the market. So we tag them, we assign them to an agent. So when I log in in the morning, I see exactly how many active leads we have. I see who they are assigned to, and then we have notes. I see what they're buying or selling, or their listing or buy side, what is their price range, what is the location they're looking in, and then we have notes. So I know what's going on every time I look at the tracker. Now on the tracker in the bottom, we have a pending tab, and then we have a closed tab. So active leads, pending, and closed. Why? Because you might have $7 million worth of active leads, right? And then you have 1.2 million pending, and then you have 2.4 closed. So I want to see by the end of the year, out of the leads that you have generated in 2023, how many of them are right now pending because that's your next commission and how many of them you, you've been able to close. So you want to see, do you have a 20% closing rate, a 30% closing rate? Is there some part to, um, um, so said better your percentages because you want to work less and make more money, right? Get that red closing. Okay, number three, posting schedule. Um, if you decide to do things with social media, it's a job. Just like cold calling is a job. If you cold calling, you wake up and you call, you dial from 8 to 11 or whatever cold callers you are. I don't know because I don't do that, right? Never done that. Thank God, I never had to do that. It's against my religion. I can't do that. I cannot beg someone for the business. I am not doing scripts. I'll say whatever the heck I feel like saying. And um, I always had a chip on my shoulder and always thought that they're lucky if they get that they get to work with me. So quote calling is not for me. Okay, so let's go to the posting schedule. Instead, I do posts on social media and I talk to strangers and I bait, meaning imagine the fishing, right? Imagine that today you go to the lake, there's all kinds of fish in it, right? And then you're gonna fish with hot dogs and then they're gonna bite or not bite. And tomorrow you're gonna fish with corn and then next day you're gonna fish with a lure and then you're gonna take a shrimp and you're gonna take a whatever, right? Baiting means I'm changing up my lures to see which one's gonna make you bite right? So for that, we have a posting schedule and the agents on my team, they have to post in this order. Mondays, choose a listing from KV Core, any, I don't care, one that you love. It could be downsizing, upsizing, late from, not late from condo, vacant plan, whatever you want to do. But now here's the catch. If you post a $200,000 house, what kind of buyers are you going to find? People that shop in a $200,000 price range. If you post a million dollar house, what kind of buyers are you going to find? People that shop in a million dollar price range, right? What is the work to see? Yeah, you're going to work just as hard for the 200000 that you're going to work for the million. Is the commission the same? Nope. You make five times more money here for the same amount of work than you make here. So what you post is in your control, right? Your income is in your control. How much money you're going to make is in your control. Now, you might say, yeah, they'll go, but there is no million dollar properties near me. Okay, how long do you have to drive? 30 minutes to find a gated community? Are you willing to drive 30 minutes longer to make five times more money? Because I will. If you're not willing to make, drive an hour for a $30,000 commission, I sure will. Right? So that's how I look at it. You get to control what you post based on which you control your income. So number one, Mondays, choose a listing, any listing, I don't care. Mind you, it's in your control how much money you're going to make. Tuesdays, your listing. So every Tuesday, we, we post one of our listings. If we don't have a listing, then again, we just use a listing from KB Core. Wednesdays, search for home. So every Wednesday, I kind of just remind the people, hey, guys, 
I don't know if you know this, but I have, have access to absolutely everything. And now that EXP is coming out with the in, with the national MLS, we literally have access to absolutely anything. We are like the Zillow. I'm so excited. Um, so we post those on Wednesdays, Thursdays, open houses. So I service an area called Pinkney, Michigan. It's a very small area. So if I just did open houses in Pinkney, I'm lucky if there is one this weekend, right? So instead, I do the whole county. So we do uh, Livingston County open houses, and we do that every single Thursday because I feel like if we do Thursday night-ish, people will kind of be like, oh, this house is on the market. They'll make time for the weekend to go see it. And then Fridays, how much your home is worth. Fridays, we do how much your home is worth because if you do this right, you're going to get some very first time I did it, I got 29 CMA requests. And I was like, I don't have time for this. I don't have time to look over these numbers. I don't have time to call them. Call them all. So we put them on a Friday. So then I have the weekend to run the CMAs, even though KB Core will send them an automated market analysis, right? I just don't necessarily trust it. And if they finish the basement or put in a pond or things like that, then it's a totally different number, right? So usually what I do is the system sends them the CMA, but then I follow up with a phone call, just say, hey, the system sent you the numbers. How do you like it? Have you made any upgrades in your home? Because if you did and you didn't pull a permit, it's now reflected in your public records. It's not going to be reflected in the numbers. Would you like me to stop by, look at the condition of your home and give you a true analysis, right? So those kind of things. The ne next one is the importance of reels. So when you do social media, you can just do just sold, just listed, just closed, just whatever, or a flyer or those things, because that thing doesn't work, guys. It does not work. If it looks like a fire, you're flyer, you're selling something. If you're selling something, I'm not buying. Many of my videos, you see there's no writing or no pictures. There's no writing on it. Why? Because if you put writing on something, if more than 20% of what you are posting is writing, then Facebook is going to look at it. Oh, it's a flyer. If it's a flyer, you're selling something. If you're selling something, you need to pay for advertising. So not even 2% of your current followers are going to see your post. So you do not want to do that. So and next thing, you need to do reels. You need to do videos, guys. Video, video, video. What do you need to do? Video. Get in front of the camera. I don't care that you like, oh, it's too painful. Guess what? It's more painful to be broke than to be on camera. So just get on camera. Everybody knows you. That, that knows you knows what you look and sound like. And the people that don't know you, what do you care what they think? doesn't matter get on video do reels now reels do take some time to edit them i don't have patience for that so i have a, a team um i like to use most of my employees are vir virtual assistants from other countries even my editing team and i have a tv show guys so if you go and look for gogopreneur um you can see the editing team is from venezuela and they pretty much edit all of my videos they can do reels for you and all that if you need their information just message me on um, instagram and i'll send you their link you can use them I use them. I've been using them for years. Um, the next one is websites, funnels, and ads. Now, you do have to have websites. You do have to have funnels. You need to run ads. Here's the thing. I do not run ads for real estate, right? The reason why is because I'm able, thank God, to generate so many leads organically that I do not leads from I do not need leads from online. But if you do need leads from online, it's a very simple fix, guys. Just run a $10 ad a day. Like, Create a quick video, tell the world who you are and what you do for a living, what area you cover, and just plaster it all over to for people to see. And then again, you need the website because what do you what are you using Facebook for? The audience. You're using Facebook for the audience, but you need to take that audience off of Facebook and take them somewhere. And that somewhere needs to be your website. That somewhere needs to be your calendar. That somewhere needs to be just call me, right? So what you want to do is create these funnels. So you take these social media platforms, the LinkedIn, the Instagram, the Facebook, the TikTok, the YouTubes. Imagine a funnel, and then you're funneling them to that landing page, to that website, to that funnel, right? And on there, you're going to capture their information, so you need to follow up with them. Now, if you run ads on top of it, so you can do this organically, and that's what I do and teach. I, I do organic social media marketing. Thank God I have enough business, and I don't have to run ads for that. Now, if you do see my ads, you see it for my agent attraction bootcamp because I do have an agent attraction bootcamp, but that's the only ads I ever run. Okay. And if I do webinars and those kind of things, I do not personally run ads for real estate transactions. But if you're asking me, you should absolutely do that. 10 bucks a day, even if it gets you one client, right? By the end of the month, you have 30. If you can close at a 20% closing rate, you have six closings. And if you pay, spend 10 bucks a day, what is that? $300 for six closings. I mean, I don't know. Do the math. 
what you think. Now, I don't know you, I don't know your area, I don't know what 10 bucks is gonna buy for you, right? Because if you have no social presence, 10 bucks is gonna buy, get you less leads than if I spend 10 bucks because I organically reach a, thousand, a, a million people a month with my profiles, right? More than a million actually. So what happens is if I spend 10 bucks, I'm organically reaching a million plus the 10 bucks reaching me, reaches people that I didn't organically reach. If you don't have an organic reach, the 10 bucks is gonna buy you whatever. Make sense? But as you are growing, you can grow that audience. You are going to reach more people organically and through paid ads. The next one is referring partners. Oh, and if you want the company who builds my funnels and runs my advertising, just again, message me on, on um, Instagram. Now, if you message me anywhere else outside of Instagram, you, get a, you are going to get one of my virtual assistants. <coughs> if you message me on Instagram, you get me personally. Okay. Um, I use a company called The Wizard, and they pretty much just do all of my advertising. They build the funnels, all of that stuff. So if you need their information, let me know, and I send it to them. Send it to you. Um, next one, referring partners. What do I mean by that? Number four, referring partners. Well, it occurred to me about four or five years into my real estate career that I sent about nine million dollars worth of buyers to a lender, and I never got a single lead in return. Well, it's a two-way street, honey. If I am paying, if I am feeding your family, I'm not expecting much, but I'm expecting you to feed mine. So look at your partners, your referring partners, the ones that you've been sending business to, and look at, do they do the same? Because guess what? Does that lender, do you think that lender pre-approves clients that don't have an agent? Absolutely. The question is, who is he or she sending it to? Clearly not to you. And that means there is no two-way loyalty. There's only one way, and that person got to go. So when it comes to your referring partners, look at the list, who you've been sending um, clients to, and in return, have you gotten clients back? And then you have two options. You can have the conversation with them of like, hey, this is how it's going to go from now on. I'm not expecting anything that I wouldn't do for you. So if I'm sending you 10 clients, I'm expecting 10 in return. And if you can't do that, then we're going to have to part ways. Okay, the next one. Literally, sit down and write down where did your last five transactions come from? Where did they come from? And I mean, literally, where did they come from? Was it a bonfire conversation with so-and-so's cousin? Was it your book club, your yoga class? Was it your um, child's best friend's parents? Was it from online? Was it from open houses? Was it from Zillow leads? Whatever it is, I want you to look at your last five closings and literally answer the question, where did it come from? But down to the very first contact. Did they DM you? Did they call you off of a yard sign? Like literally, how did the conversation start? And you are going to see a pattern. In those fives, you're going to see, oh, four of them came from open houses. Where do you think you should spend your time? Or you might look at it and be like, oh, it's fear. They literally just all just kind of call me out of the blue. Guess where you need to be spending your time? Break bread, lunches with your sphere. Going to the birthday parties. Keep an eye on their Facebook accounts. Their kid just graduated. Send them a gift. They had their 20th anniversary. Send them out to dinner, right? Like those kind of things. Like build those relationships. If it's your SOI where your leads are coming from, you need to nurture those relationships. So I want you to look at your last five closings, break it down literally step by step of where did they come from. The next one is mindset. I am, I am huge on mindset, guys. I am a huge believer that your success, 90, 95% of it is the six inches between your ears, is your thoughts, is how your mind works, is that how fast you make a decision, is how you look at life and how you take action on life. Everything that happens to you, you have two options. You can be a victim or a victor. It is your choice. And the decision-making factor is your brain, is your mind, right? Think of it this way. During COVID or any history event, right? Did somebody have it different than another? Did they have a different president or a different tax break or a different law? No, everybody had the same thing, but how come some people will come out of that situation thriving and some people are broke? And that's their mindset. That's the only difference is the decisions that they made in the same situation. In order to do that, you have to feed your brain. Not only that, but the person, me, the person who made $16,000 in their first year, could not possibly make the 2.7 million I made last year. It's not possible. It's a different person. Not only that, but your cells in your body change every 90 days. You can fight change up and down all day long, inside out, doesn't matter. You are physically not the same person who you were 90 days ago. Your cells are not the same in your body that you were 90 days ago. Not only that, but think about the person. Think about that little you in diapers. 
you know it was at some point you were that little person in diapers, right? Is that you today? Is the same Junior Batki? Yeah, it is. Is the same number on the birth certificate? It's the same social security number, but is it the same person? Change is inevitable. Not only that, but you have to leave your old self behind in order to be able to create that new person. To be able to take yourself to the next level, you have to leave the last level behind. And that's what's hard for people. It is okay to outgrow people. I know it hurts. I can tell you, I had an amazing real estate coach. And when I outproduced him, I felt super awkward. He was my mentor. I looked up to him. And when I, when I passed him and I'll produce him, I think it took me three months to get over it. It is weird, but it is necessary. If when you outgrow someone, that just means that you grew faster than they did. Or they gave up at some point and you didn't. Or you had bigger goals than they ever did. So when it comes to mindset, I have a few quotes that changed my life. Number one, write this down. In order to be a top one percenter, you have to do what 99% is not willing. Because if everybody was willing to do that, that one percenter would be an average person. The reason why that one percenter is there is because of the work ethic, maybe the amount of work that they put in, right? And the willingness to take risk. Most people live in their comfort zone. Top one percenter, take risks. Bigger the risk, bigger the reward. Bigger the failure too, but who cares? You could do, go do it again. If you're not afraid of failure because you believe in yourself that you can do it again, one of my favorite is the light bulb story, right? Like Edison, <clears throat> they asked him, well, you know, you, you tried a thousand times and you failed a thousand times. And he said, I didn't fail a thousand times. I just found a thousand ways that didn't work. Mindset. I'm not afraid of failing. Who cares? At least I tried. Well, it wasn't for me, right? But I never want to look back at my life to be like, hmm, I wonder if I would have came to EXP and if I would have achieved anything. I don't have to worry about that because I'm here and I achieve things. Next one, build your dreams or someone will hire you to build theirs. I came from the Ameri for the American dream. I didn't come here to build somebody else's dream. I will sure die trying to build my own. And right now, if you're in a position where you are collecting a salary, you're building somebody else's dream. Somebody else's American dream. And the reason you do that is because you didn't bet on yourself. You didn't take the risk on yourself. It is risk. Of course, it's risk. If you're working for commission and you're unemployed every time you sell the house, right? But if your pipeline is full and you know where your leads are coming from and you know what you need to do to get that next lead, you never worry about that. And the next one, if you find a way to make money while you're asleep, actually, if you don't find a way to make money while you're asleep, you will never be wealthy. And that's a Warren Buffett quote. So what does that mean? There's only one of you and there's only 24 hours in a day. And I remember when I sold 42 homes by myself, my head was spinning and I was like, I can't sell another home, not without sacrificing time with my family. And I wasn't willing to do that. When I got into real estate, my boys were two and four years old. I didn't get into it to take that mom away from them. I got into it to have it all, right? So I want you to figure out, you will get to your personal ceiling. And if you want to make more money, you're going to have to change something. So in that time, what I changed is that I started selling more expensive homes, same amount of transactions, higher volume, so higher commission. Eventually, I started a team. So today, I'm no longer in production. I am proud to say that in 2022, I personally sold zero homes. That was my goal, and I reached my goal. Now, we did sell, I think, 70, 68, something like that in my team with one and a half agents. I had one agent full-time, one agent part-time. Um, and I'm very proud of it. I don't even live in the state where my team is at. I don't pay for leads. I don't have an office. I'd like to say I have a black and white printer, but I don't even have a printer anymore because I brought it down here to Florida, right? So I have nothing in Michigan and I run a, an adorable little team. And we did uh, $3,000 no, $3, short of $500,000 GCI, right? So you need to figure out how to multiply yourself or how to create other business opportunities that makes you money while you're asleep. So then you have what's called wake up money. And revenue share is one of that wake up money options is that you work at it, right? 
and at some point or continuously, but it's making you money. Even if I don't roll out of bed today, if I get sick today, or if I take my family on vacation, I can still make that money. Um, and I want you to figure out multiple ways. So an average multimillionaire has six to seven revenues of income and they only trade their time for one. I want you to figure out what you are trading your time for. And this better be the things that you enjoy and makes you the most amount of money. And the other five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever you want to do needs to be passive or you will hit a personal ceiling and you're not going to be able to go past that um, because there's only one of you and only 24 hours. Um, the next one is you get paid for the hour what you bring to the hour. I know that if I go into, uh, let's say the seller says that they're interviewing multiple agents. <laughs> I know that I don't care who's on the other end. I'm going to win. I have been in the industry long enough. I have paid hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars for knowledge. Right. When I walk into that room, I don't want to say I know it all, but at least I know the person who does or I know the company who can help. Right. So knowledge, not only that gives you um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, self-confidence. Right. But it also gives you a heads up versus the agent who doesn't know their head from there behind because they just got into real estate. The next one, number seven, uh, invest into yourself. What do you think I just meant by that? The last quote said the same thing. Invest into yourself. So here's the thing. Let's say there is that Tony Robbins event that's $10,000. Most people look at an event like that and says, oh, but it's $10,000 and I don't have $10,000. So there's a reason why you don't have $10,000, right? You don't know something and you need to know and learn it. But not only that, but if you believe that a person who's been there, done that could help you, do you think that if you spent $10,000 and you truly went and you paid attention, you took notes and you came home and you implemented what you learned, you could make that 10000 back and then some? Absolutely. But most people look at things like how much it's costing me versus how much money is it going to make me? I no longer look at anything that how much it costs. I look at how much money am I going to make after I come out of there and I implement what I learned. In order to get knowledge, you can do it a few ways. You can do it the hard way and go try to do it yourself, or you can buy people's knowledge who's been there, done that. The reason why it's so expensive is because they've been there, done that. So you're not buying the philosophy of selling real estate from someone who never freaking sold real estate, like some of the real estate coaches that have their dad in real estate and now they do real estate, but they never actually sold the house, if you know what I'm talking about. I wouldn't pay for that, but I would pay for people that actually done what they are teaching because that's the quickest way to success. I want your knowledge put into my head over a weekend and I want to come home and implement and build a business on your knowledge and I will pay for that. I have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in my career for knowledge. Um, you're going to see me at every event. I'm at every EXP event front and central. Sometimes I get to speak too. Um, the next one is, Alan, I analyze your business. I want you to take a step back and look at your business and see how did you get to where you at? What are your weaknesses? And hire that out, by the way. Uh, but also, if you want my um, help with analyzing your business, I do analyze people's businesses, one of my favorite things to do. Analyzing your business, you would come to the meeting with your numbers um, and what you, your pain points are, right? And I will look at your business and tell you what I would do. Um, and for that, you will find, just go to gogobetki.com and you will find a link to jump into my calendar. I only take on two clients per month, so I'm not sure when my availability is, but um, if you have some, just click in there, take a look, and um, I'm more than happy to help you. Um, books, in case you haven't seen, I have plenty of books. I have books everywhere. Um, I am a huge believer that you have to feed your brain to learn from others through books as well. Um, I, If you go to my gogobetki.com and you go to my Amazon, you will find my book list, my book recommendation. So use that. Um, one of my absolute all-time favorite is it here. Oh, I just used it a couple of days ago. I showed it to someone. Um, it's The Greatest Salesman in the World. And uh, by OG Mendino, I think the name is. And the next one is Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. Those two is an absolute must read. Um, reviews and feedbacks. I think it's huge. It's very, very important to get to have good reviews. People are going to Google you and your clients. If they would just take five minutes of their time and give you a review, it's going to change your life. So reviews, I use Zillow. Why? Because Zillow is good at generating traffic to their site. And I want to be on Zillow. I just don't buy the leads or pay for their services. But I exist on there as an agent with a five star review. Um, Google My Business. You have to have a Google My Business and get reviews on there and your Facebook account. OK, so those are the three main ones. Um, affiliates and giveaways. Affiliates are huge uh, because it's affiliate income. It's additional income that you're going to get 
um, from using or so said, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, for promoting other people's businesses and services, right? So for example, let's say I'm using CRM Grow and somebody asks me about CRM Grow, I'm going to send them my affiliate link and through that CRM Grow is going to pay me because I got them that client, makes sense? The next one is, um, well, the giveaways, you want your local businesses, you want to promote them because they have followers. You go to the local floral shop, you interview them. They've been in the business for 10 years. They inherited it from the mom and dad. They do blah, 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 right? And now you're going to tag them when you post that video. And then when you tag them, they're going to share it. So now everybody that follows that floral shop gets to see your account. You grew your audience. You just got yourself a client. The next one is multiply, multiply yourself. As I talked earlier, and this is my last one and number 10, as I told you earlier, you will hit a personal ceiling. When you hit that personal ceiling, you have to multiply yourself. You have to remove everything from your plate that you hate doing. You have to remove everything from your plate that needs to get done, um, but it really doesn't matter who gets it done. It just needs to get done. You need to remove everything from your plate that doesn't make you the money, even if you love doing it. There are things that I absolutely love doing, but it doesn't make me money. Well, I need to take my time here because I only have this hour, and in this hour, I need to make the most amount of money. So when you multiply yourself, I do that through VAs. I have two employees, my husband and Christy, who's been with me for eight years, who are here in the United States with me. Everybody else is a virtual assistant. I do have house assistants too, actually. She just came in and gave me my water and my vitamin. Because if she doesn't do that, then I don't take my vitamins and I don't drink enough water, right? Um, but besides that, everybody I have is a virtual assistant. I have, I don't even know how many, over, <clears throat> over 20 um, virtual assistants, and they are all over this world. I have them from Pakistan and Brazil, and they are amazing, and I couldn't do what I do without them. Now, getting virtual assistants, it is a little painful. You do have to teach them things, so you can't expect somebody to come into your business 12 years in and just take over your emails, right? Like, you have to teach them what's important to you, how do you respond to people, what's your lingo, those kind of things. So for three months, they're kind of an expense, but after that, they will make the money back, right? Because think of it this way. Now, when I work, and I only work 24 hours a, a week, right, because I only work three days, but I have, let's say, 20 people that work full time. So I have 20 people that work 40 hours, that's 800 hours in a week, plus my 24 hours. So in every week, I work 824 hours. Do I work 824 hours? No, I don't but 824 hours worth of work gets done. So you have to look at it. Do you have to do this exercise? No, you don't. Somebody has to do it, pay them, pay them to do it. So if you are making, calculate your hourly rate, my hourly rate is $2,300 an hour. So I know when I'm doing this, on average, I make $2,300. So if I'm doing this, which is data entry or sending paperwork to my CPA or whatever, stupid stuff, opening mail, right? Am I making 2300 bucks an hour? No, I'm not. So I should stop doing that. Does it need to get done? Yes, somebody can get it done, just not me. So now instead of spending an hour here that doesn't make me any money, I'm going to spend time here that's going to make me 2300 bucks an hour. Make sense? So that's what you need to do to make the most amount of money. You need to hire out everything else so they can work more than you do. So eventually you can retire. So I could be retired right now. I just wouldn't know what to do with myself. So if you know that you want virtual assistance. I founded a company, I'm no longer a partner, but if you want their information, where all of the VAs are trained, they come trained to you, just let me know, message me, and I'm going to send you the link for you to get in touch, uh, in touch with them. And that's it for today, guys. I did go a little over, sorry about that. Um, but these were the 10 tips for production in 2023.